This is Dan Bjork on Agronomus with Landis. And the question of the day is what is this triple digit temperature uh, week that we're facing here? This is August 22nd, so we've already uh, uh, had some, some heat yesterday. What is that going to do to uh, my soybean yields? Uh, is it gonna have an impact? And the answer, my answer is yes. And I'll explain why. We've got a soybean plant here. We've talked about this in the past. This is a live plant factory. It runs 24 seven. The root system is your assembly line. You can see we got really good nodulation here to help with our nitrogen production. But this root system then needs to take up all the potassium, phosphorus, and those 16 essential um, elements that we need along with water. Keep this plant running 24 seven at peak efficiency and then you've got these solar panels here with these leaves that capture sunlight and putting all that together fill the pods which are the warehouse anything that shuts this down this process down is going to reduce final yield so 100 degree days um, we've talked in the past that when you get above 90 puts a little bit of a hurt on these plant factories and they, they tend to slow down. If that factory shuts down, you never really uh, recover 100% um, uh, of what you, you could have. Now, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a disaster. You think, what is the yield potential of soybeans? Well, the record yield is over 200 bushels and probably not many of us have, have hit that. If we have a goal for 80, if you gotta get to 80 to make uh, growing soybeans really interesting to you, then we've got to figure out how do we eliminate uh, stresses that occur even before the heat that may cause uh, yield reduction. So yesterday I, I, I went out in the heat and I looked at several fields and this is what I saw. First slide here is soybean cyst nematode uh, impacted plant. You can see from the leaf it looks like potassium uh, and it is, um, and there's also some uh, root shots here showing you the soybean cysts. I found cyst nematodes in nine out of 10 fields this year, 90% of the time. So those parasites are running around uh, this soybean plant. I feel like parasites running around in your circulatory system. And um, man, if you have, you know, some other kind of virus come, uh, come in, your, your immune system is not running at full ability to fight it off. And I think that's the same thing that we see with these plants. So soybean cyst nematode, uh, underlying number one stress um, that we got to deal with. Uh, here's uh, some a video from another plot where we saw the difference between the different sources of resistance for SCN, P88, 788, and Peking. I'll let the video tell the story. So what happens is the infection occurs early in the season, gets into the root system, and then as the season progresses and we get to this time of the year, that's when toxins move up into the leaves and it causes this destruction of leaf tissue, which hurts photosynthesis and hurts that plant factor that we talked about. And yeah, this stress has a huge impact, um, especially with pods that are like this one at the top. No, this guy's probably not going to do anything at all. And you already can see that we lost this one. And they've got a little ways to go. And so it's going to take the top end off. This is August 22nd, so it's not going to be a disaster. But in looking to next year and what you should plant, I think it's interesting. This is a, a PI-88, 788 cyst resistance uh, variety and here is a new Peking and this is a 2.1 and it's just incredible the difference between the PA88s and these Peking. I know they've talked about correlation between SDS and SCN um, when those parasites uh, get into the root system and open up entry points for the fusarium. So you wanna control SDS with variety tolerance and, and seed treatments. 
and then you come in with the with the Peking, which are still holding um, pretty good against uh, the SCN biotypes that we have out, whereas the BI the uh, the PI 88s aren't. Not much more to say. Be interesting to see what the yield difference is. This is a plot along 169 south of Fort Dodge, open to the public, so I thought I'd come in and this is what I found. So soybeans just nematode. Um, if you have plants that have been suffering uh, all year long with SCN and you've seen some of those yellowing in the f uh, fields and, and uneven um, uh, canopy and you dug up Brits and saw the cysts like we showed on, uh, uh, earlier, um, those plants are gonna be hurt by this heat this week because they've been hurting all year long. Some other things we found, SDS. And SDS and SCN sort of go hand in hand because as we said in the video, um, the cyst can open up points on the root system for the um, uh, SDS to come in and, and, and cause challenges. So we've seen uh, that combination. Yesterday I also saw this, um, brown stem rot. Uh, and once that starts to occur, um, Basically, uh, you've, you've lost yield and the stress will just um, have the plant shut down even more rapidly. It's a race against time with some of these diseases to try to get finished before the disease takes over. We saw this uh, in a field, uh, gall midge, new pest that has come from the west, uh, from Nebraska, and has been causing some, some challenges, especially um, in the Carroll, Iowa area. Now this is from Webster County and so I haven't seen as much here, but obviously something we're gonna have, have to look at. Um, so you're thinking about the stresses that we've already uh, demonstrated. Uh, there are three or four. Um, if we're going to improve soybean yields and if we're gonna have the plants tolerant to uh, weeks like this week, we need to build a strong root system. And you can do that by picking genetics next year that have better tolerance to some of the stresses that we deal with, better tolerance to white mold, uh, SDS, using Peking source of resistance uh, uh, for SCN, um, and uh, the brown stem rot that, that we talked about. Other things that we can do is we're looking at seed treatments and we're looking at research back here um, on this farm to find stress mitigators that, that actually help against things like uh, SCN, uh, first of all, um, that produce better root systems uh, and that help us in times of dry weather stress like we've experienced, many of us, um, since 2020. Um, stay tuned because we will have another video and we'll have meetings later on this winter talk about the results that we've seen. There are many, many companies talking about various different uh, products to help mitigate stress and, and, and dry weather stress. I think the final thing that I want to say is that this is a live plant factory, as we uh, indicated. Um, I think it's the combination of stresses, which I call field stress load, that hurt soybean yields, that keep our yields way below where I think they should be. I think today with modern genetics, we should be at 80 bushel beans. And a lot of us are struggling in 55 and 60, even in, in good years, depending upon the stress load you have out in your fields. So work with your account leads uh, at Landis. We've had a lot of training um, in the last two years since I've been here to talk about how do we, first of all, identify the stresses and then fix them. Because if you can eliminate four out of the five stresses that you have in a particular field, in your field environment, you have a much better chance to maximize yield and withstand temperatures like we have today um, and the rest of this week. And by the way, guys, it's a good thing that we had the rain earlier in, in uh, August to kind of help us because it's not looking like we've got a whole lot of rain chances coming even after this um, uh, heat spell this week. And it looks like the temperature is going to moderate next week, but we may be done with the rain that we're going to have to finish out uh, these R6 beans. And I saw yesterday some beans with pods at the top that were still pretty flat. So if we want to finish the top pods, which adds that extra, extra bushels, man, we, we have to uh, take seriously um, 
figuring out ways to eliminate some of the stress load that we deal with. Hope this is helpful. I hope it answers some of that question. We don't have all the answers. We're, we're looking uh, every year at trying to just improve our recommendations. Dan Bjorklund, Landis Agronomist, signing off till next time.